In last week's video we took a look at how construction of the new HS2 station at Euston was progressing. In today's video however we'll be taking a look at the approach into Euston station which as you'll see is an incredibly complicated undertaking. The approach which is being constructed by a joint venture between Skanska, Kostain and Strabag involves constructing two new road bridges, a large cutting to house the track and crossovers, three tunnel portals and a huge concrete slab above the box house and the crossovers on which uh, oversight development or OSD will be constructed. The approach itself must be constructed in a narrow strip of land less than 1km in length that is flanked by the west coast main line on one side and an existing retaining wall on the other above which there is a road and houses. Whilst a 1km long construction site may sound relatively large, the engineers have to squeeze a lot into a narrow area which makes the construction of the approach into Euston incredibly challenging. Added to this is the fact that a busy main road will have to be demolished and then replaced, but before this can even happen another smaller road that has already been partially demolished called Granby Terrace must be rebuilt. Once a new Granby Terrace bridge is constructed, utilities can be diverted away from Hampstead Road and along the new bridge and only then can Hampstead Road itself be demolished to make way for a new bridge that will pass over the station throat. If this wasn't complicated enough, engineers are having to deal with existing structures such as a retaining wall that runs alongside Park Village East. Before work can begin on the new cutting to house the approach and the crossovers, the existing wall is having to be strengthened with 20 metre long ground anchors. In simple terms, ground anchors are steel bars that are drilled through the retaining wall and into the earth behind to provide additional strength for the retaining wall. Those anchors have now been installed and work has now moved on to constructing a concrete ground beam that will run the length of the wall and provide additional support to the base. Once work to strengthen and secure the wall is complete, material can be excavated to construct the massive concrete box that will house the two sets of crossovers that will be located between the tunnel portals and throat of the station. Above the box for the crossovers a huge concrete slab will be constructed and on top of that a public space and OSD will be built. This will mean that in effect trains will be travelling underground between Old Oak Common until they reach the throat of the new station. As with the OSD above the new station, the development above the approach will play a crucial part in helping to fund the new station, which given the complexity of the station and the approach will run into the billions, with the contract for the approach alone including tunnels from Old Oak Common valued at around £1.2 billion. The complexity doesn't end with the cuttings, new bridges and OSD, the tunnels approaching the box will also be a complicated engineering feat. Starting in 2024, tunnel boring machines or TBMs will excavate two 7.2km tunnels from Old Oak Common that will reach Euston Approach by the mid-2025. Before reaching the approach, the upline towards Euston will be split into two separate tunnels in an enormous cavern that will be lined with sprayed concrete. The two tunnels that will contain the uplines heading towards Euston upon leaving the cavern will diverge with one heading slightly east while the other heads west slightly. The single tunnel that will contain the down line heading away from Euston will then emerge in between those two tunnels. Excavation of the tunnels approaching Euston towards the cavern will begin in 2023 and will be dug using excavators rather than TBMs. This method involves excavating a short section of tunnel and then spraying the section with concrete in order to reinforce the tunnel. This process is then repeated until they reach the section where the cavern will be constructed and then work can begin to excavate the cavern itself. The tracks emerging from these three separate tunnels will then come together at two sets of high-speed crossovers located in the concrete box. The purpose of this complicated arrangement is to maximise capacity whilst ensuring services can operate as reliably as possible. By grade separating the down and up lines, trains will be able to reach all of the ten platforms at Euston whilst removing conflicts between trains heading north and those heading south. The high-speed crossovers will allow trains to maintain as much speed as possible on approach into the station. Obviously trains will be slowing down as they approach Euston but crossovers often force trains to slow down well before they reach the station and this has an impact on capacity. The faster you can get trains in and out of the station whilst remaining comfortable and safe for passengers and the more capacity can be squeezed out of the line. The tunnels as they approach Euston will require some surface construction with a headhouse needing to be constructed to service the cavern for the uplines and a new headhouse constructed at the tunnel portal to provide access for track workers and emergency egress for passengers in the unlikely event that a train needs to be evacuated. The head houses will also provide ventilation and high voltage power supply for electrical equipment. So there we have it, that's Euston Approach. I hope I've managed to explain it well as it is a very complex build. But if you have found this video informative, please do hit that like button, leave a comment and consider subscribing. It really does help the channel get noticed and grow and it really is appreciated as always. Just before I finish, I would like again to thank SCS and HS2 Limited for providing access to the viewing platform overlooking the site. It was a great opportunity, uh, but I'm going to leave it there for today and say until next time, bye bye.